So hello guys, and I thought for this video I should talk about the OSSC uh, 1.8 revision now. What you're looking at here is actually a 1.6 uh, revision that has been modded to use the latest firmware. So what does the new firmware brings to the table? Well, there's 1440p uh, for 240p uh, consoles. There's also fake HDR support, and I believe there are also some uh, minor fixes to like, the overall firmware. Now, I did report like a bug when it comes to the PC98, but when I tried it on this firmware, it was not actually uh, truly fixed. Overall, I also like the improved sync detection that this new firmware brings to the table. So. Sega Saturn has been far more stable on uh, on the newer firmware than on the older firmware. On the older firmware, it was very much unusable. On the new firmware with this uh, fix, with this hardware fix that you're looking at here, the wire that I soldered to this resistor, wow, it is much more stable. I only get a few occasional dropouts. So I do believe for master system, this would be improved if I still had a Scott cable for that console. However, the bad news is that for Super Nintendo, uh, you will still need a digital mod because this is not good enough for the Super Nintendo or the NES for that matter. Which also means that if you are using a Koryu and connecting it to that, you will still need a digital mod otherwise. Uh, you will get dropouts with NES and Super Nintendo. So let's take a look. So here we are with the OSSC and the Mega Drive, and we are outputting a 240p right now. But this my capture card that I'm using right now does not actually support uh, 6x. 6x is actually 1920 by 1440p. So I need to refer back to 5x. And you know, but that's not the only addition that you get with the OSSC because you do get stuff like fake HDR right here. Now, I did try it on my TV, but all it did was losing some color accuracy. It did make the screen brighter at the cost of losing some color accuracy. This may be good enough for the NES, but for most consoles, I would not uh, use that. Even on Mega Drive games, which only have like 64 colors, I did notice the difference. So that was uh, a new addition. And uh, of course, uh, I believe there was stuff like scan lines. I, I actually forgot if it actually I, I had the scan lines. Uh, well, exactly. I'm not a huge fan of, of scan lines, but you can see them here. And they did fix some uh, compatibility issues, especially on my TV, although it is a bit unstable, especially on some consoles like the... Uh, I do believe for arcade boards, it should be a lot more stable with the new hardware modification. But uh, I'm using unshielded cables personally, and I did, I, I'm still getting sync issues. So the Sega Saturn especially, but also even like the Mega Drive. And if you have a Super Nintendo with a, without a digital board, you will still get uh, dropouts issues which is quite unfortunate. The other issue that I encountered at 6X was I needed to adjust the vertical uh, active settings. By default, it was set to 28C8, which is you know the default for PAL. But at 6X, this would actually cause uh, a few glitches uh, right below it and this only happens with the Mega Drive. I've tried it with the Sega Saturn and the Sega Saturn did not exhibit this issue. It was, I only noticed it so far 
with the Mega Drive and Master System games. So uh, before we move on, I'll show you the uh, Master System game. We're back again on a Master System game. And it says 5x, but if I try 6x, I'm pretty sure it, my capture card... Oh, my capture card does like 6x for the Master System, which is interesting. Yeah, we are at 6x, so great. So now I can show you. Hmm. So that's quite interesting because for some Master System games, I would still get actually the glitching issue uh, right below the screen. I'm not sure if that's actually my tv or my capture card that is not compatible well that is more compatible in some ways but if you get this issue you will need to address the v active settings as well as the back porch you will need to increase that as to center the screen uh properly other than that though this the new updates uh not a whole lot to it besides that like you know more scanline settings and better sync uh stability still not perfect but when it comes to stability on my display certainly not as good as the retro team uh, 5x in triple buffering mode uh the ossc right now does not have a triple buffering mode which is unfortunate and I know that on the wiki, they actually do not recommend the Super Nintendo still for the OSSC Pro without a digital mod. So, yeah. so anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you and bye.